Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'd like to dive into the toxic life of Queen Coral, because I feel like most of the fandom can agree that there is just something off about her. I have to admit, I didn't really pick up on it in the series as much as I should have, and tried to rationalize her actions. But when you look at the things she's done, some of them just show how awful she really is. This video contains spoilers for The Lost Air and some very minor ones for Talons of Power, so please keep that in mind. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the video. Queen Coral, though I wouldn't consider her an antagonist in the series, is pretty awful nonetheless. Even though her subjects aren't scrawny and spiteful like the Skywings under Queen Scarlet's rule, she still doesn't care much about their well-being unless it affects her. For example, when Tsunami noticed two seeming soldiers limping back from a battle they had been in, Korra was more worried about the way their blood would stain her carpet. She only did something for them when Tsunami intervened and brought it up, and only then did Coral actually get the medical attention. She didn't care that a dead dragon was found in the Kingdom of the Sea, and merely yawned at the thought, thinking it had nothing to do with her. Coral even didn't seem to care much when Tsunami kept telling her that her friends could drown in the cave they were chained in. Her own subjects fear her quite a lot, as shown when two guards feared being punished after giving a key to Tsunami so she could free her friends. It's a valid concern, too, because Coral literally killed the guards who stood outside the hatchery whenever one of her dragonets died. But even when she figured out that it wasn't their fault, she didn't seem to feel any remorse for her actions. Whenever Coral is displeased by a subject, it usually ends with death or severe punishment, causing her own subjects to fear her greatly. Queen Coral's sociopathic behavior is further shown and she punished Webb's entire family for his betrayal. Most people usually just think of how she hated Riptide for simply being Webb's son and called his bloodline tainted, but his wife was also affected. Coral assigned her from kitchen duty to having to serve in the front lines, knowing very well that she had a three-year-old dragonette to care for. To make matters worse, Queen Coral seemed pleased at Webb's reaction when he found out what became of his family. If that doesn't sound messed up for a queen to take pleasure in her subject's fear and sadness on some occasions, I don't know what will. Her lack of empathy is a massive problem. Queen Coral is also a huge narcissist when it comes to her accomplishments. Even Tsunami picked up on how odd it sounded when Coral bragged about her literature constantly and made them required reading in every ocean school. She is incredibly selfish as well, as shown when she would choose the biggest fish at the banquet for herself and expressed her displeasure when Shark gave Tortoise an octopus to eat, despite the fact that he hadn't eaten in days. Narcissistic behavior is a huge problem as well, especially because it does impact her subjects and even her family. When people think of Queen Coral's toxicity, the first thing that usually comes to mind is her overprotectiveness, and for good reason. I know Coral was worried about losing another heir to the throne, but she became borderline obsessive about keeping Emony alive, to the point where it affected her in devastating ways. Her becoming so obsessed with her daughter caused Anemone to develop an ego, think that she was above everybody else and didn't need help, and among many other negative personality traits. Anemone desired attention from that point forward, and Coral's poor parenting is to blame. The end of magic in her veins did not help at all. Coral had a harness created with her and Anemone, that way nothing would happen to her. She even wanted the same thing done to Tsunami, but luckily she was able to prove herself and that she could take care of herself and didn't need it. But even after she should have been able to learn her lesson, Coral still decided to attach Auklet to her with a harness as well, even though she had three living heirs to the throne now. And to be honest, I don't think things will ever change. I feel really bad that Auklet has to live with Queen Coral as her mother and won't have as many freedoms as her sisters now do. The threat to her heir's survival is gone, yet Coral still acts obsessive. Admittedly, she has been a little kinder to Anemone and Tsunami since then, but it does look like Auklet will still be receiving the harness treatment for a while to come. If you thought I was done talking about her carelessness, oh boy, I'm not even close to being done. Coral considers her sons to be worthless and even called them this in front of Turtle, simply because they can't be heirs to the throne. She's admitted to knowing very few of their names and hasn't given them any attention throughout their lives. I was glad to see a book with a POV of a seeming prince, because it dove further into Turtle's sense of worthlessness due to the fact that the princes were so overlooked. She never spent time with them and seemed to neglect them, just simply not giving them royalty status like she would if they were one of her daughters. Turtle is the perfect case of how that can negatively affect a dragon. Coral also completely ignored the warning signs in Whirlpool's behavior, simply dismissing any negative responses that Nemini had because he claimed to love everything Coral did. She was willing to have her daughter marry an incredibly creepy dragon just because he claimed he looked up to Coral. Queen Coral completely used Anemone when she found out she was an animus. 
though the attention shift benefited Turtle, it completely ruined Anemone's life from that point forward. She got more attention and became Coral's number one obsession after that. She brainstormed ways she could use her daughter to win the war. She ignored Anemone's complaints about Whirlpool teaching her to use magic, which caused Anemone to resort to faking her powers being weaker than they really were. She didn't want to use her animus powers, but Coral forced her to. Even though she didn't understand what was destroying her daughter's soul, she didn't pay attention to the warning signs. Just the fact that she called her daughter their secret weapon is very demoralizing. However, Queen Coral isn't a completely emotionless dragon without empathy. When she had a heartfelt conversation with Turtle at the ends of Talents of Power, she decided to write to him from that point forward, and even apologized for not giving him the attention he needed while growing up. She was also shown to love Gale more than any other dragon in the world, and would do anything to protect her loved ones. I feel like Coral is slowly improving from when we first saw her in The Lost Air, and I hope these changes will become a little more significant in the future. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. I mainly just feel like Coral should not be sympathized for as much as she is, especially because she's seen as a victim in a lot of situations, when she really shouldn't be. She even killed Abalone in front of Anemone when she was just two years old. How did she not think about the effects that would have on her daughter? What do you guys think about Queen Coral? Let me know down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.